Welcome to the Change Within Podcast. My name is Gerard Uselli, episode 28 here. It has been a daily trajectory of understanding people's change, and this is no exception to the rule because, again, on LinkedIn, there are worlds like no other colliding, and my next guest has a very extended background within the events industry, and her name is Ashley Priest. Ashley, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So the first question I love to ask all of my guests, including yourself, is what your childhood was like growing up. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm originally from a small town in Ohio that you've probably never heard of. <laughs> um, uh, Grove City, Ohio. It's about 15 minutes south of the capital, which is Columbus. And uh, I lived there most of my life, a little bit in Florida, and then back to Ohio. And I just wanted something a little different than what a lot of people had there. And I always dreamed of moving to New York and making it in the big city. And I pretty much did that a week after I graduated from high school and moved to New York City. So that, that is the condensed version of, of what I did. And I went to Parsons School of Design and um, worked in fashion for 10 years, worked with nonprofits and startups and digital and technology communities and mashed all of that together into the event world that I'm in now. Well, that's the beauty of doing events because you ultimately shared your story in about 30 seconds. You pretty much bridged yeah. my <laughs> intro on that regard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so kind of another like uh, point to that type of question is, let's say when you moved to uh, New York City, what was that experience like for the first time going from such a small town perspective and being immersed with so many different attributes around you? Oh, I loved it. There, there was no moment of doubt. There was no fear. There was nothing. I loved every minute of everything that there was every minute of everything that you could do at any time of day, night, week. Uh, that was, that was the beauty of it is that there was always something to do or be a part of or see or experience or taste or eat, especially here with all of our wonderful, wonderful restaurants. So I, I loved being here. It, it felt like home when I got here. No, that's very good. And speaking of home, a question that I have for you is in terms of how things were maybe within your family and how your event background came to fruition today, were you big into making your own events growing up? Like, were you involved with a lot of community type of events? Did you help like plan any maybe family reunions and things of that sort? Did that kind of like spark any interest? I would say it's, I would, I've always been social. I come from a really big family and my mom is one of seven children and I have tons of cousins and even just a, like a ninth birthday party was a big event for the family just because the family is so big. So we've always been very focused on entertaining and having a good time. And I, I was notorious for having uh, over the top themed birthday parties. So when I turned 16, Survivor was still really big. So I had this Survivor birthday party and we went, oh, to, wow. uh, property. <laughs> we went to property that we had in Southern Ohio at the time. And it, it was an all overnight outdoor party at a lean-to my uncle had built um, on the property. And the, the Survivor theme was, you know, can you survive the night? And we had four wheelers and dirt bikes and a bonfire. And that was, that was the, uh, the big party. <laughs> now, can you say who got voted out first? Are you uh, breaking the FDA agreement on that one? Oh, um, nobody got voted out, but I had <laughs> four wheeler privileges. So I knew where the, the bathroom was at the house, but everyone else had to go in the woods. <laughs> All right. That's already the survivor right there. It yeah, makes sense yeah. that you won your own birthday party that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So kind of fast forwarding a little bit in the events that you've done, like throughout the years, is there like one event that you really feel like it truly empowered you to do more and to kind of build yourself up more from all the other events that you've worked on? That, that first one was definitely when I was at Women in Digital, which is now uh, called Together Digital. It's a women's business association and community group. I was actually one of their members and then eventually started working for the organization. And we had an annual conference. And the very first annual conference I went to as a member, not as an employee. And it was a really great conference. It was a half-day event. 
food was served, great speakers. And um, I think we had around 150 people. That next year, by, by the time the organization had grown so much and I became their national director of events, I think we had over 400. Wow. So that was a significant increase. We had, we had tripled in size in a span of three months when we started launching in on the East Coast, the West Coast, and cities across the U.S. Ultimately, we were in 25 cities in the time that I was there that I ever saw then operations for. And that annual conference was after we had announced our partnership with South by Southwest. So those, those two events in conjunction, that, that event at South by Southwest where we had 800 attendees and the na annual national conference where I was in complete control of everything. And anybody who says that they do an event alone is lying to you. It takes, it takes an army to put on an event, but sometimes that army is small and mighty and comprised of very dedicated volunteers. And I uh, was able to do that with the community support, but that project and event was my baby. That was three days of multiple venues. I think we had 60 speakers different events that were overlapping, breakout sessions. And that was really the culmination of everything that we had worked on for a year to, to bring to life. And that, that was the turning point in all the events since then have just gotten bigger and bigger. How would you describe South by Southwest to someone who's never been before? Uh, <laughs> and their official name, I believe, is South by Southwest Music Festival and Conferences. So I would start there. Uh, I think a lot of people know about it from the music and then a lot of people know about it from the TED Talk style presentations that they have. So I would say it's this um, vortex of technology meets uh, topical thinking, music and experience. It has, it has all the things and it's in Austin is a really cool city. Absolutely. And also kind of like maybe with the travel aspects, maybe in Austin or what have mm -hmm. you, before the pandemic, did you ever have a travel story that you feel like you only could have went through? Yeah, uh, I do not have good travel luck. I, um, I will just put that out there. If you're traveling with me, my luck is amazing. If I am by myself, if it can happen, it will happen. Um, this, this isn't related to business, but I, it was two days before my friend's wedding. And I had the forethought to have my bridesmaid's dress sent to my parents' address in Ohio where the wedding was taking place <laughs> because my airplane was hit by lightning. Oh my God. And we were grounded and I was stuck in Philadelphia. And then I was sent to, I went from New York to Philly and then we were rerouted on a different plane to Washington Dulles. And I slept on the floor in Washington airport. Uh, I only had about four hours of sleep and I slept in the gate where the next plane out was going because I could not get a ticket. I was on standby and <laughs> the, um, the flight attendant that came to set up the desk for the morning took pity on me and bumped me to the top of the standby list <laughs> so that I could show up for my friend's wedding because she was obviously hysterical uh, because I wasn't, we were all concerned I wasn't going to make it, but I made it and I got a lot of flight vouchers for that experience. And nonetheless, yeah. I have to give you some credit on something because I've tried yeah. to sleep in an airport before with layovers and I'm lucky <laughs> to get my half hour to 45 minutes. How the heck do you pull off four hours? That is incredible. I didn't say it was like continuous four hours. I oh, like tallied up from when. <laughs> yeah, it was not, it was not a great, um, it wasn't, it wasn't a good experience. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> it wouldn't Zero recommend stars. sleeping in an airport for nothing. No, not really. No, no, <laughs> not if you can help it. Not if you can help it. As the events industry shifted dramatically throughout the pandemic, how have you been keeping yourself busy? Lots of virtual, obviously. I've, I've been lucky enough to do some virtual events and I've talked on a few panel conversations now about what we're doing in virtual as an industry, innovative things that people have been working on, 
and some of the challenges we're facing, as well as what we're looking forward to, a little bit of a ray of hope in terms of looking at hybrid. I think virtual is here to stay. And with that being said, a lot, I've spent a lot of time connecting with different, different makers of virtual platforms. And you, know, you need to know the tools in, in your trade in order to succeed. So I've spent a lot of time getting to know those different platforms because not, not every platform is going to be right for that event or that client. And also when you're working with some private clients, they've already committed themselves to a particular platform that you maybe don't have experience with. So it helps to know a little bit here and there because they might have a reason they have a preference for that platform or they have a contract with them. You know, so I've been spending a lot of time just educating myself on the, the platforms that are out there and learning about just cool stuff that people are doing like the virtual cooking classes and um, ways to coordinate real time moments with like swag or wardrobe or other festive things that people are doing so you feel more of a sense of community even though we're sitting like this screen to screen instead of face to face and i will say within that last year you have been starting to get more used to it as far as how you interact with people because admittedly in the first three to five months of this pandemic it was a very uncomfortable experience for everybody to even just like work the technology on a general basis, even people who've been immersed in doing events for a long time to have a part of a daily routine, even people who know what they're doing at the same time. It's like, wow, I'm doing this every day. It almost kind of like freaks you out to, uh, to an extent. What's been your favorite platform doing like the virtual events? Do you have a favorite that you always like to rely on? Um. I don't want to pledge allegiance to anyone, yeah. <laughs> I have to be honest, um, because like I just said, it really depends on what you're doing. I think everyone is the most comfortable with Zoom because it's the most well-known and it has some really great features, especially if you do have a paid account, even if it's not a premium paid account, it has some really great features like the breakout rooms and the reactions, polls, q and I just, I really think it depends on what event you are doing and what your needs are um, for the event, but not just your needs, but your goals, you know, is it, um, lead generation? Is it community engagement? Is it spreading awareness and knowledge about something? Is it really just a talking head series? I think you need to look at that before you pick a platform, but I can say the ones that I personally have experience with, um, have been good for different things. Zoom is great for a one-to-one -one like this. I've had a lot of, uh, good experiences using hop in uh, not only as an attendee, but also as using it uh, for some of the panel conversations I've been on. They've used Restream and StreamYard, which has a really nice, um, great. very straightforward user interface for, for group conversations that has really easy to use tools. So I think it, it's really, you got to find what works for you. Absolutely. And kind of like a final point on this as well. Do you feel like for you working, whether it's virtual or in person, mm -hmm. which side of the, which side of like the aspects do you find to be more exhausting? Do you think like being in person and doing the traveling can be more exhausting or being on a computer and virtually not really doing much, but still being on screen for however many hours? Yeah. Uh, I once had a, had a work day where I had 15 Zooms and it was awful. <laughs> Yeah, and they were all and they were all critical meetings. They were not fluff meetings. They needed right. to happen. So um, I'm I think it depends on your personality too. I am a social being. I'm very active. I think I think being stationary like this is a little bit more exhausting because you have to direct so much of your energy in one way and there's never a, a break in this. Whereas when I when I'm on site, I am moving nonstop. I'm running around, I'm interacting with other humans. And I think I don't get tired until I stop moving. If I'm in the midst of moving. I'm not tired. That's I'm, I'm used to it. I'm, I'm going like this. So, well, kind of into a lead up of that as well, which I could assume may be in your answer for this last question. What is the biggest change you want to see for yourself in 2021? Oh, I want to hug people. <laughs> okay. That, that half answers my question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I miss, I miss people. Um, I, I'm hopeful that we can get back to, uh, not a shred of normalcy. I'm, I've stopped saying that there's, there's nothing normal about it. And I don't think we're going to go back to what we thought was normal before, but, um, a shred of social interaction would be nice. I think that's really not going to come. This is my prediction. I don't think I'm wrong. It's really not going to come until 2022. So for 2021, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, 
a continued reduction in case numbers of the coronavirus and cities opening up safely and where possible, if done safely, having small in-person events that utilize those connectivity tools that virtual has provided us with. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully a little bit less of a you know stressful kind of scary Q3 and Q4 where we're getting back some of that just community activity that we've missed for so long. I think you pretty much nailed it on the head. And with that being said, that does conclude our episode for 28. So for those who haven't checked out Change Within Podcast yet, you can check us out on Anchor, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Ashley, thank you very much for coming on the podcast today and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody.